Okay, welcome to another thrashing code, general calamity and chaos and all that good jazz. Today, gonna get back into some C sharp. Basically around the schema migration tool that I've been working on, on and off. So, just getting that rolling here. Also, get us a little, little back, background tune. Which doesn't seem to be playing. Hello, digital drummer. How is it? Can you hear the tunes? Can't tell if it's playing or not. No tunes. Oh, endless audio bullshit. Seems like every single time. There we go. Cypress test, huh? Yeah, it seems like OBS always just flips around. Flips the flips the tunes and the and the mics. Even though this time I'm I'm working with a a Lapel mic that I just put on my my hoodie here. It's a little bit different. So let's see here. Where is my codes? There we go. So where I left off last time. Got some failing tests. Um, could not find a part of the path. So let's actually, we're just going to jump right in, to debu debugging some of this. So let me find, pull up code here. And the terminal, because I kind of want to work in and outside of JetBrains Rider today. I need whatever, save that stuff. And give me a new file. What that's there, that's not what I really wanted to copy. Why did it not? Let's see, copy, copy reference, copy. Could not find a part of the path, could not, this is the message actually. So let's go find that actual path. All right, so there's our migration, CD migration, and then DC 35. No? Oh yeah, it ain't there. It ain't there, look at that, look at that. Um, why is it not there? That is the question then. I mean, I guess it bombed out, so if it, bom if, if it did it correctly though, it would have removed it. Same thing for this DC-35. Oh. Oh. Let's jump, jump to source. Let's, let's comment this one out just for the moment. See where does it control? Alt control. Nope, that was not it. There we go. Control Alt sh slash. Okay, and then the one that broke is this one. Do we even get here? Or is that when it throws the error? It's probably when it throws the error. So we'll go in here. Go to declaration, and let's get to this, yeah, let's get to, no, let's get to, oh, we can get to here, should work, right? Yeah, so now if I run this puppy, debug. Yeah, bouncing over the code window. Had to 
I had to fix it at the same time I was doing that. So, what did that give us? What is it doing? I have I have them at the office, but I'm not at the office today. Derpy derp derp derp. I'm sure probably somebody's all pissed that I exist in said state. Oh look, it's another programmer with a hoodie on, but you know. It's life. It's life. Some of us are out there. Okay, so we have Here's this migration path. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, A9 EA, A9 EA 1D. Yep. So then if we bounce down and get to this part, let's do that. Let's run to statement. Right? So we should have these paths, these these files created, I mean. Right? Oh, what? What's going on here? Yeah, 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 that's what we want. That's what we want. Okay. Add range, all these. Four each in that. <laughs> do, do a file name. So just gonna look at these real quick. Yeah, so that path looks good all the way down right I mean these things are being created so let's go look in here go look showing files and then we'll get into tests bin debug down the core app blah 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 and then this was a9EA, A9EA, there's all our files, right? So if I say that, that works, let's get down here then. Let's run to statement. What? Results are now, null, go to this. Get files, migration, what the heck did I do here? So, migration path, oh, migration path, new, and I pass in the file list to the constructor. Oh, this is what's breaking stuff, I bet. So in test, this should be a migration path object. No, why is it no? So then, yeah, file system show migration path should return, should return an object period, right? I should get an object back. So yeah, let's step into what I goofed up here. Migration patch come down here. The constructor should be initiated, passing in the git files here. And git files should, what the? Oh, that's because I commented out the test for now. So where is it? Git, git files here should return all the files. It should be a list of string. So let's do this, files equal git files. Oops, I guess it added it after I did. And then we're just gonna put files here, and then that way we can go to this point. And then we want to go to at least here and see what just is or isn't happening. Yeah, so this is public migration path. That constructor should put it together and add files to process to this and we should have that, that in the list. So then over here, 
show migration path show migration path should return an instantiated object at least all right so let's let's dig into that again oh yeah stop stop running I don't even know where you're at and let's debug that but I had run that far hadn't I maybe I maybe I missed that All right, where did where did it run to? Oh, it's still doing a thing. All right, there we are. So migration path. No, because I had I had done this. I had said run to statement, which should have given that a value. But maybe I had not clicked in the right spot. Maybe that's what the problem was. So file selection is there. Let's create a new thing. I'm going to actually take this out because that should just work. And let's run to the assert statement. Okay, so it is. It's a result. Da 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 da. Cassie Corlib migration path. Uh, result should be true, right? And files. To process should have nine items in the list of type file info. So yes, and it has migration slashes in the right place. All that, all that is in the right place. Um, so if I move to here. Seven six seven seven six seven. So and now it's going to delete all that stuff. So that should be gone afterwards if I just continue. Oh, I dad burn it. I still don't know how to continue running. Does anybody know how to continue running in JetBrains Writer? Like, how do you just keep going? Um, continue running here. Go to, nope, force run to statement. Jump to statement, evaluate expression. Is that it? No, that's not it. F5? Oh, I don't, I don't know. Oh, that, yeah, that did it. I should have thought of that. Don't you just hit the little green triangle. So, well, when I was debugging, the green triangle goes away, right? The only green triangle left is this thing. But this one run, this starts a new uh, thread running. <laughs> so it's it's kind of confusing. It's like a weird back and forth. Uh, okay, so that shows success now. So somehow this one and this one were, how are they creating it looked like their conflict was caused by them trying to write and remove the same stuff. So let's just let's just run all these again. And in the meantime, I'm going to pull up this. We'll go out here and wipe out the rest of this migration stuff. Oh no, there it went. It broke. So when it said could not find a part of the path. Hmm. Why can't it find part of the path? I am using, uh, yes, X unit, yes. And I'm doing some tricky stuff, check this out. So, at the start here, or actually I should say, in test helpers, so I have like a, uh, basically I build up a bunch of stuff. So I, I need to build these files so I can, hey Michael Jolly, how are you? Just going through what I'm doing here real quick. So you joined it at a perfect time. Um, so I'm setting up schema migrations and right now I'm just trying to get, I read in a list of files and I need to start to process them and put them in the appropriate order based on their naming convention and stuff. Um, and make sure that they're actually part of 
the job I want to run or not run. Because if if they're, like in this particular situation, I have this file, I want to be able to grab the date out of this, then determine that it's part of the up schema migration process. So okay, put that in the run to bring up the database schema. And then for the down ones, like this one, where I have down here, um, it's gonna look for a date, then ignore whatever file stuff, and then pick the down and say, all right, this is part of the down schema migration. Um, so right now I'm just trying to process these files. And this, this junk here in test helpers, just put some files out there, a little, direct, a little directory, then puts files in the directory for the test to confirm that I'm going through the processing of this. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, I don't know, it's being flaky right now on this one test. So here it says can't, could not find a part of the path or whatever. It could not find a part of the path. But if I step through it, it's one of those scenarios where, let's go in here and say, what did I just do? Jump to source, D debug. Oh, did I remove it from the thing? Let's run, run unit test. Stop. Let's go down to the, run the specific one. So run this one, do a debug. And hopefully I can catch it right here before it starts to actually delete everything. Um, it tends to so far run and work uh, successfully if I run it individually and step through it by debugging. If I execute it and just run it fast, like I did just now, it usually just breaks. At least it was last time. So it says verifying still. I think that should show us failed or succeeded. So the result is ready, as it should be. Okay, so something about the timing of getting to this and then tearing it back down is what's causing a problem. So now if I run, just run the rest, boom, it runs it, and I have a successful test, right? So I remove the debug, and let's try to just run it. <coughs> oh, now it's running. Did I somehow fix it? Let's run it all again. Let's do run current session. Run unit test. Nope, there it failed. Let's run it again and see what happens. Nope, it failed again. Ah, this is a tricky one. So maybe when it's trying to run the assert, it hasn't built the object or something? I wonder if I do console dot, what is it, log, or no, write line result dot ready. And let's do console dot write line, let's result dot files to process. I don't even know what that's gonna do, but we'll see. String. I test output helper. I don't I don't actually know what that is. But here I'll run this and let's see what that gives me. So just execute the test normally again. Yeah. <laughs> now they all run again. 
So let's see what we have out in folder. So we actually have two files, folders that are still sitting there. Who, how is that happening? So let's run this and see what happens. Now, that's, that, so I deleted the folders that ended up stuck out there. Ah, now I get a failure. But let's run it again and see what I get. And that's, oh, I didn't look at the error message. Ah, so this one's sitting there. So whenever there's a failure, it leaves the folder. So this one would probably be FEB6 something. No, 6B5? What? Migration 6B5B. Nope, neither one of those are that. So if I run it again though, is that going to succeed then? Hmm. Nope. And that one is 7B2. It's not even being left. Let's actually make it leave it. There, we'll comment that out. Now let's run it all. Somebody's not closing the test, though. Oh, what the? <sighs> so console dot right line is that stuff. Oops. Come back, debug. No? Hmm. Oh, it's not existing. My pressure. Just the files to process. I guess that's the crux is you don't get this. Oh, is that last part making it fail? So if I took out the teardown. Oh, shit. I think I figured it out. It's not breaking on the assert. That part works fine. It's the teardown that is causing a problem. Yeah, that's what it is. So the teardown here is what's causing that problem. Question mark. What do you mean question mark? Let's run that again. Yep, that's what it is. So the teardown is causing a problem. Why is the teardown causing a problem? That is the question. Let's run it again, see if we nuke it. It has that little question mark on it. There we go. Now it broke again. So that's O3F. Yeah, what is that one? Or it's or something is tearing it down too fast. Let's see. So here's this one. Set up and then tear down. Set up, tear down. Set up, tear down. Set up, tear down, and then that's just that. And that verifies the thing has picked a directory. Hmm. This is super frustrating. Verify migration path list fi failed. Oh wait, verify migration path. Verify migration path list. Hmm. 
<clears throat> Any thoughts there, y'all? I am I'm somewhat perplexed on this. Cause it maybe it's not actually. Uh so the teardown thing just basically so what it does is it goes through. Let's go look at that. I'll show you exactly what it does. So go to declaration. So there's a couple things. So to create it, it goes through and this list of files and file paths, right? So it puts all these files in one thing. So to delete it, it goes through and it deletes each individual file and then it, de whoops, then it deletes the path here, right? Because if you try to delete the path with the file still in it, then there's other conflict problems that come up. But then here is where it creates all of them, okay? 20 isn't using migration path. Oh, snazzle, is that? Oh, that's that's right. So here, line 20, the file names would be correct because they're in create these, which is the property on the test helpers that just has the list of the individual files. And migration path is just the path up to where it starts adding the files to it. So yeah, there you go. So that's the actual folder, which is what migration path is. Whereas create these, well, it says that doesn't exist in this context, but what it is is basically this, the list of the full path of all the individual files to delete. So migrations exist. Hmm. It, what, it, the, this is static? Yes. The whole, the whole class is static, basically. And files that aren't for this specific instance. Right. That's my guess, too, but, oh, shit. It's because I'm using a static class. And I need to get rid of that. And I need to make this, like this, and force it to be created. Can't you recursively delete? I don't know. I don't know of a path that lets you do that. <clears throat> I would think so. Ah, uh, yep, there is. So if I do path and then true, that should give me the same jazz. And that also gets rid of my little path problem. Hmm. Yeah, it's got to be what it is. It's oh, it's colliding with itself because it's static. Let me just make it not static. Then it'll force me to fix those problems. And I'll just have to go back in though. And right, it is never instantiated. So now that needs fixed. So test helpers. Let's do test helper new. Boom. So maybe I should actually do. So then I got this. I like it being. I don't, uh, that just adds another line of code to the test. I wonder how I can simplify it a bit. There's got to be a way to do it. Make it a little neater. 
Um, so I'm setting it up. And so this is the object under test. That's my migration path that I'm getting out of it. Um, so if I did this and then Yeah, well it's staying that way for now. A good call and check in for the recursiveness in that digital drummer. Um, I do not technically care about the individual files in the grand scheme of things, but I do from the test perspective, I think. If I understand your question. Let's undo this one. We'll see if this fixes that. You can make the helper say and just not track the files, the helper. Oh, I'll actually need to uh, track the files because eventually I need to sort them and look at them in different ways for the test. Um, I'll look at that in just a little bit, or hopefully we'll get to that in just a little bit because I would like to make that much progress, get to the point where we're actually looking at processing them and not just sorting them and stuff feel like I've been processing the sorting of them for frickin' three sessions or something. All right, so that changes those tests. So let's run them, stop running, and then run all these suckers. So I had them all back, so I should have seven, yeah, seven of them. I think it's trying to run one of them again. Right, <clears throat> that's an idea. Oh, it passed that time, but it's left this one question marked? What? Just run all the tests, darn it. All tests from solution, debug. There we go, that's running all of them. Nyan Cat begins. They run along the rainbow with his pop tot into the adventure of a new world and a new adventure of coding or something. They get everything. Okay, let's run this a few. Let's run this like fifty times. I mean pending what? Oh, because I had it selected. Let's run the whole lib. Yes, please. Okay, that's looking real good. That was my conflict. I shouldn't have made it a static lib. All right, so whoa, that what did I just do? Of course, all the changes are mine. I've been writing all the code. Run selected test, double error. Yeah. That's been taking me a while to figure out how exactly they're doing this. Do you use this IDE? The JetBrains Rider IDE for this? I use it for a bunch of other stuff, but this one's just somewhat intrinsically different than uh, the other IDEs that JetBrains makes. Why is this thing not can like covering up my eyeball. There we go. Oh yeah, that would make sense because this is basically JetBrains, but just JetBrains IDE of ReSharper. All right, cool. Seven tests, 154 milliseconds. That is not, that takes like a minute to run. That's weird, anyway. Okay, so, oh, 98% coverage. Well, what do I not have covered? Oh, the console, duh, of course. Um, I don't care about the console right now, though. 
All right. So we got our migration path. Um. Also, the other thing is I wanted to check out what is good for C-sharp builds. What does a C-sharp build these days that can do it for cross-platform C-sharp builds? Cross-platform C-sharp builds. Uh, no, it's not that complicated. Come on. Oh, does there a... Uh... Um, on this UI framework, I want to check that out. How to build a cross form cloud and dot uh, core. Hmm. See, I want to. I just want a build server, though. Where can I put a build server that can give me a badge? You know, for the repo. Options for cross-platform. Um, yep, whatever, that's a whole bunch of mess. Oh! Shit, what? No, get out of here. Bugger off. This is from 2018, so that might be, this might be pretty good. Location deployment options. This is, oh, this seems... Just trying to do a console. Why is it so complicated? Damn. Add console to realign. Okay, self-contained app. Oh, and of course it shows this garbage in Visual Studio only. Oh, now my mouse went haywire again. from the command line. Yeah, I don't know if it'll do it for Windows, though. I mean, I don't even really care about Windows that much, but... I um, wish I could make this stupid thing recapture the mouse. Like my mouse is still very clearly working, but the VM has lost it. Weird. Okay. Build for C sharp or basic projects. Building da 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 da. C sharp Tra Travis example. I don't know. Maybe I should just use this for now. Even though they were, they were bought. Hmm. Yeah, I know the commands to do it, but I want to, I want to have the commands. Um executed per OS, right? So that I know that my executable will actually run. Because if I just run .NET run and it's just testing it on Linux or just testing it on Windows or Mac, it'll really only test it for that OS. It won't, like I won't be able to confirm and run it on a specific operating system and do verification commands or whatnot against it. So it'll do the build, like .NET, build, .NET uh, build or .NET test, it does it per the thing that it's running on. So like in Travis CI, prospectively, uh, it can do the build, 
but can it do one for each OS? Like, does it actually do one where it'll check Windows, right? And bear with me, I'm just rebooting my VM real quick. Da -da -da -da. So I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna close that. And then actually that probably will fix my mouse, no? Oh, my mouse is there somewhere. Oh, this is such a stupid problem to have. It really drives me nuts. Oh, that's not what I want. I want terminal. Shut down. Restart now. Yes, please. Thank you. So in the meantime, we can look at the uh, pretzel, the pretzel screen. <sighs> yeah, Travis only runs Linux and Mac because, well, Windows is a pain in the ass. I mean, it totally makes sense why they don't run it, but <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. I want it to run, I want to get a confirmation across the systems, you know? This is a, a catchy pretzel song. Let's hear. I'm gonna bounce it though. And I'm gonna listen to them right now. Yeah, this this could be good. Machine's coming back up. But I also don't know if the machine, like it showed the mouse, but it's not showing the mouse. Hmm. Let's go to background. Uh, see how it's just, well, I guess, yeah, it's just being weird. Let's do mouse and trackpad. Primary button. Oh. oh man, man, come on. Did that do anything? Nope. Well, damn it. I mean, y'all can see the mouse there. I mean, like the hover over of it. Then I just need to get better at having to reboot again. Let's just sudo shut down halt now. Let's do that. Oh, I guess I have to type my password right. Yeah, I know. I know it's VirtualBox, though. VirtualBox has been kind of shitty about this. But, th again, doing cross-platform stuff, uh, not using VirtualBox is kind of not a possibility because VMware is such a fragmented mess of things. All right, maybe that'll... I think my head's gotten crooked. Seriously, infinitely frustrating.
Hmm. Yeah, I'm putting it in there and it's not letting me release it. And then... That is not how that usually works. See, like, here we go. Okay, so here's the login. Ah, now it looks like it's back. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. I don't know what's up with that shit. Let's open that puppy back up. So we got the we got the test running, and now basically what I need to do is I need to make a I basically need to make an object. I figured out since there's various kind of odd sorting criteria, I need to make it intelligent to make each file a kind of a part of a workflow or work process. So I'm going to make an object, and it's going to have the various data in the files or in in a way that's easily manageable and sortable etc because each file name is going to be pertinent to the way it's it's organized so let's let's take a look at that and we'll get into it a bit you running jet brains i don't know what you're doing there you go Also, just for everybody's reference, let's do the quick tour through uh, GitHub, right? Well, here's all that stuff I was just looking at. Let's get out to GitHub. And the repo is right here. Um, so there's the other one I'm working on, Trucks. This one is Cassie Schema Migrator. And I do have the various issues and I have a project set up. So if you wanna go out there and add any issues or you wanna contribute to this, please go fork it, go clone it, fork it, watch it, star it, etc. cetera. Um, would love any contributions, even if it's just suggestions, uh, questions in the issues, check them out or whatever. Um, I'm gonna get through, through some of this initial work myself, probably pretty quickly over the next couple of days, maybe a couple, couple weeks or whatever, but uh, I would love help with the other things, just like figuring out the outputs for Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. Um, that's pretty straightforward, just like Digital Drummer was mentioning in chat. That's like a .NET build whatever. Um, but we def I definitely want to get it where it can build out to any OS because really this needs to be able to be used typing, you know, migrate, uh, database, blah, 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 and it should work on Windows, it should work on Linux, it should work on Mac, no problem. Because there's really no OS dependent anything going on here. This is pure and simple schema migrations for Apache Cassandra. That's what this is. So, um... With that, let's go ahead and look at the projects and just, this is basically what I'm working on right now. I wanna be able to get the CQL files in an ordered list and have them uh, be able to log them out or whatever. So, let's get back into there. I'll dig into that stuff later. And at some point I wanna do a cross-platform UI for this. I think that would be pretty sweet. But right now, we're just working on this. So, all right, this is the Travis CI thing. We'll go ahead and skip out on that for right now. We'll just keep working on the project and its functionality. So I'm trying to get this stuff in order. So what we need, right now I need to build it into the objects list, and then we're gonna turn that objects list, okay? <coughs> So if we look back at our test, we go down here and let's say 
fact. Oops, there we go. In public void verify. Um, what is the migration thing I'm building? So this is this is the file selection. The file selection object basically is instantiated based on a schema of path. If the path doesn't exist where the schema files should be, it's either going to grab a configuration one from an environment variable or it moves on. I believe is how I have it set up. Yeah, and then and it checks for the directory, doesn't exist, it pops it in there. Um, and yeah, then it looks for the files in it. Or it doesn't, it doesn't add the directory, that's right. It just looks in the directory to see if the files are there. If there's files there, then we have a valid perspective schema to process, schema migration to process. Um, and that is where, once, once all that's done, once it verifies the directory, verifies that there's files in there, um, and I do need to verify a little bit more that then just migrations exist, like because it needs to uh, know. It should say files exist actually right here. So let's do that. Let's rename it. Let's refactor it with a rename and say let's say prospective migrations exist. There. Okay, and the reason I say change that name is because just because files are there don't mean that they're migration files because they need to start with a date, then have a pertinent description, which isn't super relevant to processing, but so you can eyeball it and see what that particular migration file is. Then it needs to have dot up or dot down and then dot CQL. So it needs to end with CQL too. The three criteria, have a date, some form of description or not really, doesn't even matter then dot up or dot down and then dot cql so those are the three criteria um and that's what we need to kind of parse into an object and begin the process of figuring out what we need to execute so let's here migration path show migration path uh, get files return new migration path file okay and my migration path is going to be a list of file info objects and then it's going to have a bool ready migration path yes and the other thing that needs to have is public let's do a public class um, we'll call each migration task mission migration uh, what should each file be called? It's, it's like a state, migration state, migration shift, migration task. We'll just call it migration task for now. Um, and in that migration task, we need to build it in the constructor. So I'll do public migration task. We'll do that. All right, and we're gonna do that for each file. So this is gonna take a file info, migration file. Oh, we need something that's gonna, in here we need to also make sure that this list is valid based on those three criteria. So here I'm just gonna say, well, that's, that's it for now for that. But here, files to process, let's do, oh, info. oh let's, we'll, we'll process it here. We'll start processing it. Probably have a private, private function that'll, or private method that'll actually process it. So let's say var um, migration file equals File, well basically we want to say new file, oops, new file info, and then file path, like that, and then let's see here. Hmm, how can we parse the beginning of the file? 
Okay, so the file names can look like this. I want to be able to have different dates at the beginning. Um, and then a dash. Ah, so that's, that's what we'll do. We're going to take this format and then we'll yank the dash or we'll go up to the dash is what we'll do. Or maybe I should add a dot there. Maybe they should be like this date dot. Yeah, I like that requirement much better because that fits with where they're actually uh, parsed apart. So let's do that. So then over here, see, I don't really know what my test is. I want to think this through a little bit more. So migration file. Oh, and let's add in some junk in here. Right, so there's that one. And then let's do a path dot combine uh, directory dot full name. And then another, wait, let's start with a date so it looks like a legit one, right? 05 2000, not a file to process dot up dot sql so that way you could even discern that this is not not a cql one to process right and path dot because we need to end with uh, cql only so then directory dot full name and then let's go with 01 01 2001 uh, dot this thing dot nope dot text okay so that'll or actually so that won't be parsed up or down and then let's do that should actually cover our test huh so this one will verify that we can get the one without a date out of there. Yeah, so let's let's work on that first. So just as is. Okay, that's I'm gonna take that out for the moment. And I'm gonna take this out for the moment. What did I do? Oh, there we go. And then what I need to actually do here is build it. Well, I just did a build. Why did I just do a build? I didn't mean to do that. Shortcut key hell. Um, can you may read only? Yeah, sure can, but whatever. It's not even that important of a, of a property. Okay, so yeah, now my test I think these should pass, but I need one that's gonna verify. Yeah, those should pass, but I need one that's gonna verify that I should really only have X number of files or whatnot, right? Um, so yeah, they, they pass, but some should fail now. Let's add that criteria. So we'll go back and refactor, verify migration path list, this one checks verify list of files to process, okay? So the actual list shouldn't go by the known files. It should go by what we know, which is that there's only nine files to actually process, but there's gonna be how many? Nine, 10, 11, 12 files. So this should actually be nine. That should go away because I can't use it for that one. 
This is fussing them out. The literal consonant should be passed as the expected argument. Oh yeah, expected. And then that, okay. And in here, technically that'll be fine. I don't even know if I really need to have a ready flag, but <clears throat> it's in there. I don't remember why I was adding that, but this one will definitely change based on that other criteria. But let's add one in here that's actually pertinent to the facts. Fact, um, public, void, verify, let's verify, list of files, start with, dates. And actually, let's let's just get rid of this one. That one's not even really a good test overall. Right? So look, I'm going to actually copy this. So you're in that it's originally this. Yeah. So the new one is going to be verify list a file start with dates, and then we're going to need fact of public void ver verify list of files um, either up or down migration. Actually, even before that, verify list of uh, verify list of files. R CQL type. Right. And then fact verify list of files. CQL. Start with dates, CQL type, R up or down migrations. Hmm. And we'll do the, yeah, it's just up or down. And at this level, we're just getting a list that's going to be up or down migrations. All right, so with this, we'll need to build out test migrations. We're going to instantiate the file system, then get the files, and we'll have the known files. Yes. Okay. And then test helper will wipe out the files. And then this test is going to be refactored into oblivion. We'll go for each um, var file in result. Um, So are we doing that at this level? Refactor, go to declaration. We could scrape out the ones that don't even parse here. Right? And would I even need to go down here and mess with the files to process? I think this file system thing should actually process it. So get files should be a cleaned up list. So we'll do this here. To do implement removal of non migration files here. Okay, so I'll create these. And result. Cert dot um, let's see. Do we have a, yeah, starts with um oh how do you even check for type? Or do I check for type or do I check for something else? We should parse it and then determine it, right? So let's say what would be the parse? So var string 
of our, of our starting file name date equals file uh, dot er file dot split is there a split yeah yeah okay split uh, by dots and then part one right if if that can even happen so the the function the method should clean it up though and should yank out that part or, or should have it there and if it's not there the, the yeah this should be fine so it'll look at that first part and it starts with a date it starts with it. let's do is a is date I actually call it date file uh, file date equals uh, date time dot parse right Let's parse starting file name date something right oh crap how do you how do you do that date time C sharp date time parse string Thing. I'm not using the conventions. Well, I'll just show an example. I know what it's supposed to do, but I don't know how it's supposed to do it. Um, what the hell? There has to be, just use the method. Yeah, date time. Converted date. Yeah. What's it fussing about it? Oh, I have extra parens. That's unnecessary. Okay, and then this file date. Um, date. Oh, and then let's, uh, so we'll know it's a date, right? What else we got? We, can we do a... In range? Oh, before... It's gotta be an existing date, right? It's gotta be before today. Um, so is less than? Is... Is not type? Oh! What about is type? See about that is type. Oh yeah, let's do that. I picked exactly the given type. Yeah. Date time. That's what we want to do, right? Yeah. And we can do that. So, and if if not, then it'll just blow up, right? I mean, it'll always be correct. But it'll also just break if it can't parse a date. Right? Okay, it se seems good. Seems good, y'all. We're gonna go with it and see how it blows up or not. So that should blow up now because we don't have anything filtering out the stuff that's not a date, right? Uh, what? Oh, okay. I was about to say, that is not even appropriate. That's ridiculous. There we go. Verify list of files start with dates. Failed. That is correct. So what's it say? String was not recognized as a valid date time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Beautiful, beautiful test. Um, all right, so. Let's make that thing clean up this crap, right? So, we'll say if file info files i, oops, 
Well, let's split it. We'll split it first, right? So this far working file name equals this. And we'll do to string, right? And then working file name. Wait, let's do this. Let's do it. working file name and then file name parts equal working file name dot split. Oops. There we go. And that should probably be or could be. Let's do this. Boom. Right? There we go. One thing, that's all we need. So then, we'll say, if file name parts dot, oh wait, parts, the first part of it. Oh, first, if it doesn't parse into at least, what, three items of date, message up and then whatever so four four parts so if the index isn't greater than three if file name parts dot um length is it yeah length is greater than three do all this stuff right else well else just whatever do nothing and so we can just do this so that's a that's a baseline. Well, shit. Come back here. There we go. So that's a baseline for this. Yeah. Okay. And then All right. So, like 3 And then so add it if it's greater than three, but then we also want to put a pause right there. So we can look at each one as it processes it, kind of go through this. So yeah, greater than three, so first part. So then if, if file name parts uh, zero, so that'll prevent an error. Right, zero. Um, let's parse it into a thing. So let's do this, then uh, date time. Uh, date of migration. And then we'll do this. And date time uh, dot parse. Oh, come on, damn it. What am I doing wrong here? What? I don't have that in there? Oh, weird. That was super weird. And we're just gonna go with that first index piece. There we go, okay. Now, if date of migration is less than date time dot now, less than, oh, first off, if this is greater than that, no, we want to. We do want to do less than less than this. Then life continues, right? So we're gonna add it then. So in the end, then that's gonna do what? It's gonna take out like one file, I think. Let's run that puppy.
was a fun tune. God, build slower. Jesus, Pete. Dot net. All right, so we're get, we got here to file parts. So this first one, we have five parts. What? Oh, so this. What the hell did it split on? Oh, the first one was this. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Whoops. That is a goof on my behalf. So let's actually get this where... See, already a good catch there. What we want to split on is not the whole thing. We want to split it on... It's a file info. Array of file info. File info files. So let's do this. Let's let's rename this. Refactor, rename to just files. And then files, yeah, and then files dot. So this is files info. File dot. Not too strange. Nope, this. What is that? But let's say var file name equals files dot thought. Yeah, it should be this. And then I and dot. Yeah. Full name. Let's just just name. It's this. It's the name of the file. There we go. So there's that. And then this actually should be what's in here. We'll do the split there, like that. Let's call name. And then we're gonna split that and get the file name parts. All right, so that should get us the first one here. Let's try that again. And while that one runs, I'm gonna actually go and snag a beverage. So I will be back in just a few minutes, a beverage and a few little things to eat. So might be just a few minutes, but I have, I have a cool new thing that I put together. Um, path not get file name. Um, I guess I could do that, but I already have the the file name if I just say name, right? Um, yeah. Let me think about that while I grab food real quick. And in the meantime, here, check out this uh, cool refreshments transition that I, that I made. So here you go. I'm gonna go grab a drink and I'll be back in just a few minutes.
All right, so, um, yeah, sorry about the wind noise. Uh, da -da -da. Let's... Yeah, that wind noise is kind of absurd. Oh, what happened? What did I do? Oh, I messed that up. Oh, this is... <laughs> I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. I think I'll do that. Um, so this one changed. Oh, crap, what did I do now? So... So, 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 I confused myself here. I guess what I'm doing. Oh, this pretzel tune has like gone bass drop, almost not metal. It's just weird. So, let's do this. Yeah. Okay, so, Hav. Yeah. Okay, so this is. Let's do this. Pause. Um, let's, files to check. Whatever. That'll work. So this one is going to be this, this, and this, right? Yep. Okay. So then we get in here. Thirty-two. Oh, that does. So, uh, you mentioned path dot file name or whatever. Dot name is just the uh, file name, not the whole path and everything else. So yeah, like see here, if we scroll over, you can see that it's just the file name. I don't know why I tried to just highlight that. That was not the smartest thing I've done today. Yeah, so we got to here. So file name should be that. So one, two, three, four parts if we split it at the period, which should give us an array of string with four different parts. Perfect. So that first part should theoretically parse into a date. So if we run down to, well actually let's run to here. What does this say? Evaluating the thing. Okay, so 5106. Is that right? 5106. So the date says May 106. So that's 5106. All right, so parts of the date, good. It is before today. So we should get down into here. Right? And then get down to here and see what we actually end up with. Oh, what has happened? Ah, ah, okay, so if it's not a date though. So this is parse. Hmm. Well, if it's not a date, let's do 
Isn't there a parse? Maybe it's parse exact. Shares in a date and time just did not Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> and I do want to do two short date time string to cut it down because we don't need the time on it. The time isn't designated. Mm hmm. Do time parse string if not date try parse yes why isn't that in the docs there or did I just miss it oh it's just way down here Oh, yeah, I tried to type that earlier, but it did something weird. Converts this misfit string to date time. Yeah. Yes. Yes, that's what I want. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do date time dot try parse. And then we'll put in the string. This part. Of migration. Right, and then it does what? Something? Result equals. So then that would be. So then I could do this, right? No, I still need to do bar. This, however, needs to be date time, date of migration, like so. And here, okay, so that's now. No, because that'll. Uh, how do I. Ah, uh, okay, so is that what result is? Yeah, that's me not looking at docs for you. So if. parse. yeah. And daytime migration lesson. Now, then we'll add it. So let's get to that. Let's actually run this. That should do it, right? Ran that time. Okay, so now we're running. <sighs> Let's go ahead and do this. We'll look at it. Come on, thing. Here we go, first one, 5106. All right, so let's get down to this one. Yeah, so what do we got? We got 11, and it took, what, just one item and removed it? Everything has a date, yes. So the one that doesn't has been removed. 
All right, so then the next thing we need to do Oh, so that should that should actually pass. Then they call up run. Oh, with try parts, I can actually change the test also to be assert dot is true daytime dot try parts. That's another thing I should do. And then this won't break if, yeah, what does that say? I don't know what it says. Oh, we waiting for stuff. Keep going. See, there's that stupid thing. Just keep running. Sure, whatever. Restart. Yeah, let's change that test. Let's go assert dot true um, date time dot try parse. Yeah, starting file name date time. Uh, what? Okay, maybe I shouldn't use it. I ain't messing with it. All right, so how'd our test go? What is not recognized as a valid date? All right, I'm gonna change this. Assert dot true should be date time dot try parse and then starting date time. I should be, oh yeah. And then, I don't care, whatever. Result. Oh, actually, I guess, I guess I could do, oh, let's do the date. Uh, did I do this backwards? Our string. Right, so var result. Right? No. Put crap in there. Oh, yeah, duh. And then this should be result. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm trying to actually do that to some degree. Um, but it's not the exact same because I'm not breaking it apart. I'm just looking at the one specific part um, uh, but I am breaking it apart. Yeah. Hmm. And in this situation, I just assume that they all... See, I'm just taking the front of each file, though. I'm not really looking at any other part. could do this and just leave it the way I did have it.
And also, I want my... So, the other thing... So I'm coding similar logic in it, but I'm writing the logic independent of the file, of the, of the class that's doing the actual processing. So I'm trying to approach it from the opposite end, but make my tests so that they can test pertinent to anything, that they're not testing just some static set. So that way when I add more elements to the files to test, the files should be able to dynamically manage handling additional pieces of the files and not always just be looking for one static thing at one static point within the file structures and everything. So that's why I'm trying to do it kind of dynamically from both ends, right? Because I intend for this to, I don't know exactly all of the features that I want to add for the files themselves. So I need to keep both ends dynamic. Otherwise I'm going to have to refactor. It'll get to a point where I'll refactor all of my tests probably more than I would the actual code. So that's why I'm trying to kind of stay away from that just a little bit for now. So now I'm curious what, which one, seeing like even right here, what just happened because I'm approaching it from the other end, I'm just saying take the front of the file and look at it and verify that it's a date. Um, It, it does, I think. Um, let's go look at it. Here. Yeah, because, let's do this real quick. I say real quick, and it takes five minutes for the damn thing to rebuild. Oh yeah, good point, good point. So that says check, so we should be getting to it soon. And then criminy, are we there? Ah, uh, there we go, collecting data. Finally, okay. So, yeah, this ends up being just this. Whereas that first one is, this is JetBrains Reiner Greenoff. Um, yeah, as you can see here, like the whole file info is the whole, the whole path and everything. So it's just getting the file. So yeah, back over in the test. Um, da, 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 da. So what do I do here? I do file, get files, but it's not, they're not, are they file info? What am I returning? So it's just list strings. Damn. But is it just list strings? Was returning the files. Uh, I feel like I should do something here to actually clean that up, though. Oh, like I should do. Try parse file names, zero. So I should just add this, and that'll be the file name. That's what I should actually be adding. Oh yeah, I see what I did. Remember when I renamed this a little earlier? I renamed files, or I renamed this to files, and it screwed up my scoping of the two and created a conflict. So I didn't rename that when I needed to, back to what it should be, which is file name, because I just want this added if these things are true, right? 
Um, yeah. So let's, let's knock that out of there and let's run that again and see where we get. I don't need the full path of the file at that point in time in processing it. Hey, Frackberg, how are you? Just writing some C-sharp today, or trying to write some C-sharp. Yeah, because at some point, or I mean, not at some point, but uh, at the point in which I get the file list, I need to execute, I need to just pull in the data. So no matter what, I need to, at this point, parse it down to the most minimal thing um, and get the CQL out of it too, at some point. Um, so yeah, basically, yeah, here, I'll show you in a minute. I'm, I'm trying to get the data into in object format. Let's break this out a little bit. I'm gonna put this, can I put this into a new file? Generate code, no. Ah. It needs to go to a new file. to interface in line. Oh, maybe move? Oh, there's no move. Oh, maybe I need to make the file and then move it there? Oh, that's a function. I'm not trying to move the function. Let me do this. I want to get the other classes out of here real quick. Yeah, there we go. So do this and then move to yes. That's what I want. Um, yes, please add it to Git, and we will be happy campers all together. So yeah, so I have file selection, which I'm using that class to go through, parse all the files, and, and get the path for where all the files are, etc. Um, once it does that, then it needs to build um, the files to process, right? And then it dumps those. Oh wait, so file selection. Yeah, and that goes in. And its end game is to get all the files, the list the list of files that are in that directory, in from the right directory, and then it hands over to the migration path. The migration path then starts to build the ordered process in which the migration needs to occur. From here, it's instantiated with the files for migration here, okay? So the file selection doesn't have any logic about what files should be doing or which ones are actually migrations or whatever. It just looks in the folder, grabs all the stuff, and it says here you need to determine if these are legitimate files to process or not, right? So once I determine if they're good files or not, which... What happened to my, go? Oh, I feel like I folded it and now I can't unfold where that went. But anyway, so file system dot get files. Oh yeah, here it is, folded all up. I'm wrong, so that's not actually what I'm doing. I'm parsing the files and getting the ones based on the name specific, and then I'm gonna hand off the files and have them build via the migration path where, uh, see, because here I'm handing off the like the file info. Oh shit, maybe you're right. So if I add that and then I go in and I say, go do this with the files from git files, then yeah, that screws up the whole thing. You're right, I need the whole path name. So here would be files to check, and then the index path.
Oh, it's just it's running. So stop running. Oh, that's right. I need to do. Yeah, I need to hand the object back. New file info. This. Okay. No. What the heck did I have in here before? Oh, not files. Files. Parts. No. Files. Check. It's this thing. Yeah. What am I freaking returning then? So get files, return list string. So files dot, yeah, so just the path. I need to do, files, record. God, I've gotten myself turned around again. Damn it, hell. Oh, is that what I was doing? Files to check. See, that doesn't make any sense either. Why am I turning it to a string and then back to a thing? Yes, yes, good catch. Um, I feel like I'm about to nuke this test. Because if I just if I just return the file info, that's what I really should do is I should just return the file info object. I should do this file info. No, whoops, shit. A list of file info. So Yeah, a lot of things are gonna fuss. But I think that's the better decision though, really. Because then I could test the file info object better too. It's not assignable to string. Oh yeah. So that it add that back appropriately as a file info object and I could return files and file selection. Let's do this. Get files, folding, refactor, or no usages? Where's find usages? That's what I want. Most excellent catch there it was off in space land, obviously. Yeah, so here, in migration path, would more intelligently receive files instead of that. So let's look at migration path. Let's change this to file <clears throat> info. There we go. And then here, I don't know why, I don't even know why I'm doing this in here. Oh yeah, I do, okay. Let's rename this though. Refactor this to just file. Oh, rename file. All right. <clears throat> so we'll get back to that in a minute. So this, however, Seems to be working, but the tests are going to be 
flaky bananas. So in here, for each of these, we could merely say, uh, file result be a file info. So we would have to do file dot to string split blah that and then say parse the beginning of it. in the files for migration. Oh, back to, back, where the heck was that? Oh, I need to change that too, actually. Are you talking about like right here? Because basically I'm skipping the ones that aren't going to meet the criteria, so I would only re-add the one that I'm going to use back to that one. Oh, in migration path? Uh, oh, yes. Yes, I could. But uh, there needs to be some more to do up here. Um, so that's the only reason there's a poor loop. This is, I got ahead of myself with this part. I shouldn't have started writing it yet, honestly. I'm not, I'm not doing very good TDD. <laughs> yeah, so let me, let me close that one down. In here though, we need to make sure we're getting the right list. All right, so make this three. So we check for that. Okay. And then, so we have a date. So then what's the next thing we need to check for? Yeah, it is kind of like test after development. <laughs> um, it's, it's test after before. I did some before and I'm doing some after now. Because I'm trying to think through how I'm doing this at the same time that I'm writing the test. As, as you have seen. Um, Alright, so at this point, there's the date. Date's confirmed. Date is before today. So we know nobody's put in like crazy dates. Uh, so those are going to be all available. They're going to be added. But then we need to make sure that it ends with CQL and then it has an up or down right before the last two bits. So we could also say um, and uh, let's see your file name parts. Oh, uh, let's see. We need to do file name parts dot index. So what is there? No parts dot length. Well, actually, let's do this. Let's let's get that value before I go digging into it. So, last index. Or let's do this. We'll call this. Uh, oh wait, there's a thing to check file extension, isn't there? So we could say file name parts. Uh, no wait, it's the dot. Or no, we're splitting it from files to check. Files to to check dot oops, i dot uh, type is it? No. Yeah, files to check. There's something that has the end extension in it. Files to check dot oh, or whatever i dot 
extension equals uh, CQL and let's do this and hey, let's hear uh, up or up down <clears throat> equals files to check. Oh, wait, I need to do file name parts. Yeah, the file info object has a crazy number of extensions or parts. I just saw extension a little earlier. That's the only reason I remembered it. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't remember that one at all either. Um, so, so file name parts needs to be the second to last index of the length. So file name parts dot, what is this? This is the total number of elements and this is the, what? What? Well, whatever, so it'd be length and then minus two, right? Zero, zero base. I don't know. Probably get an off by one error because you know that's life. Uh, so up, up, down. Okay. So then up, down should be up, down. It's equal to. Uh, equals to. Up. Oh wait. Shoot. Can I do this up, down? Or up, down equals down? Ha 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 ha! Oh, criminy. Uh, b If all that's true, we get here. Um, so we can do this, boom. So this will be starting file name date, no, nope. extension. Oh, if I'm doing get files, I can just do, whoops, shit. Check for the extension. So assert that is. Well, we'll just do equal. Equal. Um, file dot extension. Yep. Is CQL. Right. do that backwards so method so you can test it independently um yeah probably so actually I mean it's just a few more things on it should be working but yeah it should be I should probably just like create a validator right yeah like a validator class schema migration validator something like that I'll, I'll refactor it I like refactoring, especially when I got JetBrains stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that song. Oh, was that all correct? Did it, did it pass? I stopped paying attention because Pretzel was being weird. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So got failed system dot not implemented exception. 
the method or operation is not implemented. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Matthew E. Groves and Ed Carboneau just hosted me. Add a minute into a method in the class so you don't have to worry about moving through. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I feel like I'm pretty close to... I mean, that's basically all the tests for that. Um, yeah, I'm kind of brute forcing my way through it. Probably should have wrote it in that mindset. We'll get there, though. So let's hear da, da, da. This should be... Well, actually... Let's hear it says that, so it should fix it, right? Swap arguments. Please and thank you. Thanks, JetBrains. That kicked ass. Um... Uh, I'm not doing that right now. Because I might not need to do that, right? Well, I will, I will do one static test. Oops. Fact. Face. Verify correct number of tasks derived from files. So that would mean something like this. So we're pulling in. That's not relevant, but we do have. So we do that, and then. Get files. Oh yeah. What are you fussing about. Oh, <laughs> why did I do that? For? <laughs> oh god. I don't need this line either. Let's just do this and paste this stuff all together like craziness. There we go. Refreshment energy. Yeah. <laughs> so they all run. Hello. stuck on a breakpoint, is it? Oh, there it is. Processing assemblies. Oh, what did I get? Actual nine? What? What? Should 
do our result stop building equals new file selection Should path right and then get files Result dot contained in the list T. Well, what's length do? <sighs> okay. Do that. Off by one validation of comment. I could be. Almost there. Oh, yeah, it's definitely not uh, putting anything in there, is it? <laughs> I should be able to go look in the directory, though. Is it A227? Up a line and debug through get files. Yeah. My that's my path. Drag the arrow back up. How do you drag the arrow back up? Like this? This arrow? I thought I knew what you meant, but that is go back to the test and drag the arrow in the margin. Here, like this. Oh. oh my god, what just happened? So, what it? Oh, what did that just do? I don't even know what that just did. Right, so it moved execution back. Magic pixie dust. So does it re-execute the whole thing? That seems pretty weird. So that's the path. So then if I go and hit, oh, what is it? Debug all tests. And this says, oh, it's whatever that says. What is this crap? Oh, that's commit. So then if I run to statement, Yeah, but shouldn't it have the stupid commands up here? <sighs> I try to make it where it's easy for people to follow along with what I'm doing. If I start hitting shortcut keys and I just end up all over the place. And it may be F11 or it might not be. I don't know what the thing went to. Anyway, I'm just going to run down to the next statement. Which did not occur. Did 
Did it seriously just start the whole thing over again? I guess it did. What did you, what did you think you saw by pulling that back up one row though? Digital drummer. Oh, I see what you're saying. So. I'll just put a break there, and then we'll go back. Oh crap, what did it do? Come on, there we go. And then, I can say run to here, and it should break into the kit files method. There we go. Okay, so it's going to create files. We'll go ahead and step down here to the beginning of that. So files to check. There's 12 of them all together, which we'll show in a minute. Doop -a doop -a doo. Okay. And the directory should be. Wait, I ain't gonna sit there and wait for it. So we get to here. Wait a second, was my test failing? Because I had the one that said, well, whatever. Um, other tests weren't failing, but this one is, right? So actually, let me let me look at that real quick. So these tests are failing. This one is not. with this one too because if this one is not getting any results what the heck is show migration path doing anyway going back to that let's see file selection um, so I should be able to get here Go to here. Run the statement. Data migration is correct. File name parts four. Up down is null so far. So then let's let's go to this. That's what I'm betting is wrong, if anything. Or this this and on this one because and this or this right is that how one would do that I wouldn't doubt it if I got it wrong somehow <clears throat> so it says down Yeah. So then this is the next file. R. 
Oh yeah, this file would, wouldn't be processed, but here we are. Okay. So that file shouldn't be processed. And then the next one, down. There's the file name, 421.19.02, doing stuff .down .cql. And Let's see where we're at with this. Oh, it's not putting any of them in there. Why not? So this is true. Oh, I bet that's it. It had dot CQL. <clears throat> still building? Not building? Still building? We're getting there. Getting there. There we go, that's what it was. So now I swear I had another check where it was manually CQL. Oh, of course it didn't work there. Oh, that, yep, I gotta refactor the test. I got a lot of refactoring to do on this sucker. But we at least get through those tests and that's confirmed now. So, uh, what is the next? real step there. The next real step is to build the object that needs to have all those bits in it. So that would be the migration path. The migration path needs to be built now. So if we look at this, files to process. Files to process is already, I mean it's just It's, it's basically a copy of the list above, but we don't, what the hell just happened now? Stop running. Yeah, so in this though, we don't need, we don't need files to process. What we need is, cause that's getting passed in here, files for migration, right? And it's all cleaned up. So then, what I need to do here is build the uh, tasks and get the CQL to process slash execute. And then we're gonna have a public void execute migration. So from that point of view, so we have a file info object and we got a migration path and we, we need to have a model of like what a migration task is. And it's really though, it's gonna be, I think it's specific to, oh yeah, I need to do this sort. Um, we just picked valid files, we didn't sort them yet. We'll sort them in this though because the migration path needs to determine whether it's up or down and then which ones to do. So speaking of that, we should probably do 
Okay, execute migration. Oh, let's do this. We'll do execute up. Actually, we'll do this. Uh, hmm. I could just do bool up. So, then do like if up, do these else, whatever, right? Well, that's just, so the file selection, I was thinking of the file selection as just picking out the correct files based on a path, a config pass path, or a predetermined path of some sort, right? And then that's all the file selection object does, is basically get together the correct files that need to be processed. Then the migration path is gonna create is going to take those and turn them into an actual path in which to execute stuff. Uh, so file info. Yeah. So the migration path, I mean it doesn't I don't even really need I don't know if I need objects really broken out. I mean it could just parse it all, but I need a path because I want to the other thing, one of the other things that I want to do is print out exactly what it did in the particular up or down, right? Um, and at some point we'll have to know the state of where we're at and determine which files are new, which ones are old, right? So the old ones wouldn't be executed, the new ones would be executed. So this migration path is what would determine that. It would be able to know which things have already executed or not. I'm not sure I follow that one. Because I think I already have, at this point I only have file info objects of the files that I'm gonna execute for one, but I still do need to get the CQL out of the files, right? So from that context, um, I need to be able to reopen each one of those and then build the actual task object, right? The migration task itself and put the CQL into it in order to execute that CQL. Oh, right, but I don't, oh, you're saying, because, well, let's see, so this is the bulk of this class. And really this whole thing here, this should be like the validator, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, let's do that. Let's refactor it real quick. Refactor, extract. Why? Why is this? Oh, I don't have the right amount selected. Refactor, extract, method. Yes, extract to method. And we'll call it, um, was it file migration file validator parameters files to check files to well I want it to be, do I want it to be static yeah I guess it could be static actually only one of these run at a time okay so all that jazz is in there that breaks that out a bit. So in here you're talking about though, right? Is where to put it back together. Or wait, the git files. So instead of this, 
You're saying return the file info, but or but like my model with file info, but also the CQL. Because I'm taking them apart right there to parse it, right? The date, yeah, date up down. So basically, all right. So I just did that real quick, but let's. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Let's make the. So all my tests still pass. So okay, we'll build a class then that'll have those objects. Should that class then be, since it's something migration path class, we'll want to use to determine the actual path. Um, maybe I should call them like the schema migrations and make it like the model of this whole thing. Maybe. Maybe that would work. Maybe that would be good. Just keep going. Keep going. How do you do this? F5. What is this fussing about now? Did I not get this to work? Now what the hell? Ba -bum -ba -da. Not. Didn't I just fix that one? Separator on the dot. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good idea. I like I like your idea. I am now derailed though because like what what just happened here? Didn't all this crap just work a minute ago? Um Verify list of files starts with dates. How would one even get through that? Like somehow I screwed that up. Maybe get rid of the, let's do this again. Maybe that one little thing just had a little too much magic in it. What? Oh. So bad, so bad, I can't believe I did that. So, drop the split. Um, result is that, yeah. Dot name. Like that. That's what it was. Because I put the other thing back and made it... Okay. Yeah. Man, I tell you, so today's been one of those days where I could not get started. Went to the office, did some other stuff. Uh, it was kind of shitty overall. I mean, it's, it's been a chill day. Like, not, not a day to complain about shitty, but just like no productivity, right? Um, 
and it's kind of been driving me crazy, but here I am sitting here working on this stuff and I honestly feel like I'm ready to go for another six hours now, which is just not real timely <laughs> considering I probably got to like eat dinner. I got other stuff to work on too, but uh, damn it. The timing of being motivated to do something is just not convenient sometimes. Uh, so, okay, anyway. Those ran, right? All green, beautiful. So now let's do that, that refactor or redesign that you just mentioned. So, if we go to... Well, I'm going to put it right here for the moment, and then I'll just kick it out with a refactor into another file. But we'll call it public class schema migration. Shit, what was I going to call it? Oh, task. We'll do this, and we need a file info uh, thing. File. Oh, well, I don't want to do that. Just, just make it a... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Origin file, task, task holding, file, task file, task file. Uh, create prop, prop, ooh, prop. Oh, snapples, that's sweet. File info. And then, uh, what did I call it? Oh, yeah. Task file. There we go. Okay, and then public. Uh, execution. CQL. Should be a big giant string. Oh, I did it again. Prop. Uh, string. Well, SQL and public. Oh yeah, uh, direction. Yeah, I remember that. Um, should I call it direction? Should it be a bool for up or down? Like just call it up, make it a bool and call it up. If it's not up, it's down. Uh, I kind of feel like it should be uh, string and then direction like that. An enum? With two values? Eh. I don't know. I'll go with this and then redo it if if it looks like that might be useful. Because I guess, I mean, it could prospectively need to do something besides up, down, right? But schema migrations are pretty much either you're either going up or you're going down, period. So, um... Actually, I don't know. Just be goofy. I feel like going with the boolean thing. So here, how do you how do you do the enum though? Let's see your public enum. Oh, should I go lowercase? Enum. Uh, direction. And then we'll go with. Is it up? Down? Is that how you do that? I forget how it's. Exposing APIs, that sounds so raunchy. We'll call it direction. Um, oh, should I actually? Direction, and then this will be called uh, 
Well, what do I call this then? If I call the enum direction, what should I call the property where they would put the put the direction? Hmm. Oh, I'll just call it path. It's an overword, overload of the word. Actually, let's okay. The Sawyer's time. Ooh, I like this pretzel song. Where the hell did pretzel go, though? Um, oh, there it is. Oh, it's just called Grimoire by Dave Case. It's pretty cool. I like that. Okay, so let's do uh, direction. Order. Charge. Uh, maybe I should just call it migrate. Oh shit, not close the whole page. I didn't want to do that. The source. That could be, yeah. Like if it's if I called it migrate though, it would be like migrate. Um, I should call it migrate or immigrate. Or Im immigrate path up or down. Um, up down invalid. Uh, could call it shift. Shift actually makes or drift. No, not drift. Mm, yeah, I guess migration type. I don't like putting type in the description word, but actually, let's call it uh, migration. Let's call the enum that. We could have called it, and then it's like migration direction. Go with that, but then eh, migration type's fine. Migration, migration type. Kind of fits a little bit more. <clears throat> All right, and then I want to do, I want to build it where you just, yeah, let's do a public schema migration task. And you just pipe all this crap in. So let's go with, um, uh, I don't know. Can, you, can I do everything? Yeah, constructor. All the things. Give them all to me. Yeah. Yeah. All right, there. Ha, ah, didn't have to write any of it. Um, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Return those back instead of filtering them out of the git files and then be able to give warnings about invalid files versus just silent not doing Eh, that's pretty genius right there. I like that idea. Yeah. Um, so where did, where am I at? There I am. Shit. Invalid. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Um all right, migration path. I don't really need set in all any of those. This I could put back in the function like I did, but oh yeah, 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 you do, don't you? Um, let's go with oh, I'm gonna not do that then yet. So we need a public date. How do you do it where you, there ought to be just a date object? What is this date? It's, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, okay, date time. Um, created. Which by inference is the ordering, order date. Or I'll just, I'll, I'm actually gonna call it order date. Order date. Because whatever they could, somebody could write migrations and make up the date. It doesn't have to be the creation date. <sighs> yeah, 
Yeah, okay. So that's cool. Yeah. Is there anything else this object should have, though? Villainous Vikings by Viking Guitar. One of the things I love about Pretzel is the hilariousness of some of the music created. Because it's just like somebody clearly was just like, ah, I'm gonna do do this and make up this goofy name. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, da, da, da. I just noticed the live pl the the live cloders plug-in is slightly different now. But anyway, I digress. Um Alright, so we got file to build the task and get the SQL processed. It's about where we're at. Uh, except we're still building this thing. So this will be Well we need to go put it together, but basically this will be here very soon. Oh and I can just do this. Migration task, or let's just do task, and then call it migration tasks. There we go. I feel like it might be time to go play guitar for a while. What's the other thing that's going on. Uh, yeah, that looks okay. That looks good. Oh. Oh, I can just do this then, right? Or wait, like this? Just use the enum. Yeah, I was gonna new, force new up the class anyway because it would always need um, to have all the elements built out, right? Like so. But yeah, and then I got a property get only. I remember when you have to you used to have to write that crap out entirely instead of just getting getting set. That's a nice feature addition. So anyway, back over here. Blah 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 blah. Um, this is going to be a schema. Yeah, migration task. Thanks for reading my mind, computer thingy. So here we can put it together then. Or wait, perp. Actually, like right right here we can put it together. So it's here, bar migration task equals new schema migration task. And then here we'll want to do files to, oops, files to check I, and then oh, I need to get the stuff out of the file. Uh, let's do this for the moment. Then I oh, yeah, migration. Oh, I see why you. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was completely spaced on why you told me to do that. I just did it, and I'm like, okay, whatever. And then it just occurred to me. It's because I'm trying to use it out of the outside of the class. Um. Oh yeah, what is it? Let's hear. What's the best way to do that, actually? So if it's... Oh, I could say... Um, let's see here. Migration. Path, right? Up, down, equals... How do you, how do you actually... Yeah, okay. 
enum.parse type of thing I'm gonna do hickey. Wait, why is it fussing about this? Oh, I gotta, I gotta do that. Okay, up, down. Oh, and then this is it like enum dot try parse? Type of oh migration like that. Oh, I guess I need to do bar up down equals dot no well it has that this and then down. Oh. <laughs> there we go, okay. So what I need to do is Migration. Okay, so that's the you know what is it? Migration path is my object, right? Yeah. So I need to do migration up down the up down variable. The up down variable. Right. Okay. So and then equals enum dot parse. Can I just do the type that it wants like this? And then some crap. Yeah, string value right there. Yeah. Dude. Should work theoretically, eh? And then here, what what happens if it doesn't parse into that though? So then out. So more uh, migration. No, not that stupid thing. What are you doing? But that's what. Wait. Can I do that? Fix it then. Create local variable of this. So then I don't need this thing. What's the point of declaring the generic if you can't do the thing and the whatever there? That didn't make any sense. What does it say? Remove not access local variable. Inline out variable declaration. Let's do that. Yeah. yeah I like that better. Okay. So then down here, you can do migration, theoretically. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this is this is starting to look pretty slick. 
And this is going to be the date uh, migration. Yes. Okay. So now, how do we get the content out of a file thing? Uh, C sharp read contents of file. Well, can't I just do it? With, doesn't file info do it? Turn file to a string using this. Opens the file, reads all the text in the file with the specified encoding that includes the file. Opens the text file, reads all the text in the file, and closes the file. So I guess this is where string is the path. What about file info? Contents. Ah, what's this? this open text TPF8 encoding so I do file info file info fi exists I know it exists because I just got the damn thing so then file stream Uh, I think I like these. this one over here. Read all text is? Okay. It, it looks like the easiest to use, too. You just pass in the string. And to do no nonsensical other stuff. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's do it. Yeah. So I'll do file dot read. Thank you. Read all text. And then, what is it? Is it files to check i? I feel like I should make that a variable at some point here. Uh, files to check i dot uh, full name. I feel like would be the thing. So let's see, I have files to check there, files to check here. File name parts here, file name parts there. File name parts here, file name parts here, files to check here. I wonder if I can do that and then just files to check. Yeah. Files to check I. Can I just make that a thing? Yeah, variable. Place five occurrences. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do that var file to check yeah I don't know I don't know if that made it any more readable <laughs> it's kind of ah, whatever <laughs> um, okay so and then this this needs to be here and then this needs to, what? Oh yeah, files needs to change to, to here. There we go, there we go, all right. So that should be the magic. So now the only thing is, the model, oh, what, should I, I should put it somewhere else? Oh, like do a, it's a pretty clean operation, isn't it? I don't know. Oh, I mean, it'll, it's like, it's, and that's basically why to put it in there, right? I mean, it's literally the thing that's going to happen next is to go through and execute the files. I'm gonna leave it in there just for now. 
I mean, if it if it's flaky in the future, then it's a point of refactor. What is this crying about? Can I resolve name? Oh yeah, so this time to refactor some tests because that's not going to be there anymore. It's going to be that object is coming back instead. So it'd be like file dot what? Uh, starting to order date. <laughs> so like this test basically becomes this. And you can't you can't parse a date, dummy, because it is a date. So this test is kind of useless. It's just that's Um, yeah, good point. That's a good point. I mean, that's, that's completely valid. The only thing right now is it probably won't matter because, I mean, how many, the amount of files we'd have to read in anyway to blow something up would be pretty numerous. And most migrations aren't going to be up. Well, I guess it could get pretty big. I mean, we're talking at most like a thousand files with a thousand lines of code each. And that's on the super, super big side of things. So I'll leave it there just, just for now, but that's definitely gonna be on the refactor. Let's let's put that in issues, actually. Let's do that right now. Oh, I closed the GitHub page, damn it. Where is it? Schema, Cassie schema migrator. Or do you wanna put that, can you log that as an issue, man? That'd be super cool if you wanted to do that. And then there'd be someone else working on this stupid thing besides me. Here's the, here's the issues page. I'll, I'll link it to you. <laughs> oh yeah, is it not? Yeah, let me do that. Boom. Good call, good call, good call. So some of these tests, I'm just nuking these tests because change the whole paradigm and I should probably just write new tests that are more pertinent to the thing, right? So I'm gonna delete those for the moment. Or I'm gonna delete those perma and then do tests in a better way in the future here. So let's get rid of that. Doesn't need to be there. <coughs> All right, I'm just gonna leave. Well, this doesn't need to be here for right now. And then what is this task? Oh, yeah, that, oh, that's gonna stay the way it is. So I think that's good for a commit at the moment. So did I hit the right keyboard combo? I guess I didn't. Let's do commit a whole kit caboodle. There we go. So. Added test and initial read, oops, read in of the files. Remote run in Team City? I don't even have Team City. Hey, I wonder if there's hosted Team City I could use to do that build I was talking about earlier. Because then I, Team City can build it to different things. But Team City's, I don't know, I'm going to have to think about that. God, it's cleaning up code for like six hours. It says I have new whispers. But nothing. Shows nothing else. Nothing else is going on. What the hell? Come on. Doc, for building earlier, could be Windows, Mac, and Linux. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's in that DevOps server thing they have, right? Should probably do that. What is... Mm, now I'm getting paranoid. Oh, there it went. 
use fix commit get cobo. You're about to commit CRLF. Oh, I use Linux so much I don't even remember what to do with this crap. If you choose commit as is, the config value won't be changed. It is recommended to set the auto core dot auto control if get attribute to input to avoid line separator issues. Oh, what the heck? Let's do this. Commit and push. Astronaut by Sternage. Or Stimage? Stimage. Stimage. Man. <laughs> Good call, good call, yeah. Man, what is this cleanup code crap? Come on, commit already. This is environment, one environment? View deployment. Oh, that's for, you have a whole thing for that now? That's cool. Huh, yeah, there's my little my little page so far. Oh there it goes. Clean up code. I guess, I don't know. Put 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 put. Does this thing need like more processors or something? It, I'm watching this whole thing on the this is my this is my status right now I'm watching it on the phone um, got a new Android I'm gonna try to live stream some stuff from conference I'm going to next week so we'll see how that goes it could be cool it could be really not so cool Wow it's still test helpers May 2nd, May 8th. When did I start this? Oh, God, I started back in... Oh, I was doing other stuff back then. But yeah, then I made this. That's a verified one. Oh, that's neat. But then this is just me being GitHub person. What is this, though? Is your one story? Process base. Secure the... I'll be executed in order by date time. User wants to be able to store connection information locally. Oh yeah, we'll do that in the moment though. Oh man, come on. File selection. These files are not even big. Um ah, good good question. What conference am I going to? So, my employer, Data Stacks has their big shindig that they're doing. Um, it used to be called like Cassandra Days or something like that, but basically uh, over yonder in DC, uh, we're having a conference. And here's the webpage. So basically there's like eight tracks, there's a boot camp, which we we already sold out the boot camp. There's gonna be like 300 people in it. It's gonna be an interesting experience trying to help uh, TA, Teachers Assist, with 300 people going through the material, but it should be super awesome. There's going to be pretty pretty cool announcements of stuff that is literally being released then and being very, released very, very soon in relation to like Apache Cassandra and distributed database technology. Um, that's it. I mean, there's a whole bunch of other stuff here on the website. Like they got the become an expert, be inspired, plan for the future, you know, that kind of that kind of stuff going on. But in the tracks here, various things going on. I actually have a talk in building modern applications with myself and one of my cohort. Uh, we are, whoa, what did it just 
rendered the page all weird. But let's hear, we are, we are, there we are. Cassandra's got go for view mobility. So Christina and I are gonna be talking about the project that we have been doing over on, pull that up, Twitch TV, Data Stacks Academy has become Data Stacks Devs because it makes more sense. Um, so over here, we got a bunch of stuff going on. Oh look, I'm doing stuff. Oh, and Data Stacks Devs is of course hosting me. But uh, we have a series that we've been doing called Building the Geo App Trucks on DSE, which is Data Stacks Enterprise. But it's really, at this point, we're just, it's effectively we're building an application for Apache Cassandra. Maybe months down the road, we'll dive into some other things like graph database uh, development, stuff like that for the app. Open Source North. Where is Open Source North? Open Source North. Oh man, in Minneapolis? Snapples. That looks like fun. Oh wow, they got a crew there. GitHub, Red Hat, McKesson. Oh, that's Target. Oh, Yolanda's going to be there. I've seen Yolanda before. Elastic, oh that's cool. Elastic as a data store. Eh, why, ah, stop it. Um, oh, Cambria. Secret orchestration with HashiCorp. I need to know basis, interesting. I bet that's probably about Vault, I would suspect. Track.js, man, this looks good. This looks real good. Um, threat modeling on the run. That sounds kind of fun. Any any specific stuff that you want to go see while you're there? Ooh, event streaming with Apache Kafka. Hell yeah. Oh, I tell you what, so I'm gonna be doing reviews at the end of each day, which based on Pacific time or even mountain time or whatever, should be like eight or nine PM, something like that. I got it on the schedule. I'm gonna to try to meet that schedule. But basically, I'm going to do like 30-minute end-of-day reviews uh, from the conference over in D.C. I'm going to try to wrap it up as best I can. I know it's going to be kind of tough because I'm going to be doing a billion other things, too. Oh, cool. Cypress Talk. Very, very nice. Yeah, I've been trying to figure out ways to do better coverage of things like this, though. Because, like, this conference you got here this looks really great seven rooms 49 speakers infinite possibilities the other one that I want to do hopefully uh, Seattle code camp this one's always super good there's always like I don't know several hundreds and hundreds of people there um, and oh ooh, September 14 2019 I guess it's on I didn't know that the date had gotten updated so I'm super stoked about that how can I help? I need to reach out and ping them and see what's up. Submit more, one or more sessions here. All right. Um, so that's cool. And it's up at CNO University. This is in the, the Pickett building. Uh, this is actually a really cool location. You should come out here, man. Um, heck, I might even get some of my cohort to come out and attend. I guess they're looking for Let's look at venue, sponsors, attend real quick. Yeah, this is this is just a fun time though, because it just brings out so many people. The um Oh, that's for 2018. They just haven't updated it yet. Yeah, so the, the picket building here. It's right here in the university campus, which is pretty 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 up here. And it's right close to, yeah, there's Ryan House, Seattle, a bunch of good places to eat and stuff ever up there and hang out. And you can actually get, there's a few little cool, kitschy hotels to stay in. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, I'm going to reach out and ping them and see, see what's up. Because I did not know that they had already gotten that posted up there. But yeah, I wish I had gotten Open Source North on my queue too. 
it's a bummer I can only go to so many, you know? You can only go to so many conferences. I'd go to five or six of them a year if I could. I mean, just as an attendee, not to speak or anything. I like to speak too, but I also like to just go and like let everything seep in to my brain. All right, so where does this commit? This thing's gotta be done now, right? Oh yeah, there we go, push. This should take five seconds. There we go, sweet. And it is in, and let's update this puppy. Well, I don't even, what am I on? I'm not even on the right thing. Seven minutes ago, core lib, core lib test. That is where all the goodies are. All right, so, ah, made progress. Um. <laughs> What's it? Oh, yeah, NGCon. Cool. Hey, Disoat. I was just about to uh, jump out of here. Just just did a bunch of commits. Um, Digital Drummer is going to put an issue in for us to remember to refactor the read all contents of file in. We got through almost to the point where we could call. I mean, we're real close to getting to the point where we can just call and actually do an execution against the database. There's not too many more steps we need to do. Um, wants to go to store connection. Yeah, I think like this is the next thing. So yeah, literally this is the next piece. It's well, we'll, we'll order them, and then we'll get the execution done. So these two are literally what's going to be the first two bits that are done, which is going to be pretty cool. Um, and then we'll get messing with the local storage of stuff and then get into some of these other things. Um, oh yeah, good. Well, yeah, that's kind of in the process of being developed. And this one, we'll have to look at that in a little bit though, because that could get tricky. And then, yeah, same thing with that, but I will move it up here. Set up documentation for the application. I'll put that up here, because then people can contribute if I actually wrote what the heck this thing is. Um, and then, man, that was a good pretzel song. I, I should thumb up that one. Oh, I like this one, too. I think I like this one. All right, cool. So, with all that done, is there anybody to raid? I am ready to raid somebody. Oh, let's raid Code Phobia. Is Code Phobia actually coding, or is he hosting, or what's he doing? Oh, and then there's Grim, too. Oh, and of course, it's showing me an ad. I'm trying to see what's going on, and it's showing me an ad. Dad, burn it. Oh, he's building a Lego. He's building the Stranger Things Lego. Let's raid. Let's raid him. All right, Diso. You could raid if you wanted to. Then you could bail on whoever we raid. You know. But you know, up to you. Whatever. Uh, see you next time, either whichever way. As it is, I'm gonna go raid Grim. Cause I mean, come on, building the building the Lego set. That's awesome. It's intended for mature audiences. Oh, that's cool. We should go to a place with mature audiences. Is it not letting me do that? R -W. Oh, there we go. All right, here we go. Hit and raid. Rolling the credits for the raid. We'll see how we go here. Yeah, thanks. It's been fun.